Good afternoon, Robert Scribbler. It is August 28th, 2018. Thank you for joining me for another climate change and clean energy video blog. Now for this segment, I am going to talk about how the Hawaiian Islands presently is not out of the woods yet after a rather catastrophic or extreme rainfall event associated with Hurricane Lane that dumped more than 50 inches of rain over parts of the Big Island of Hawaii. The present situation for Hawaii is that as the equatorial Pacific shifts, shifts toward a, a predicted El Nino, and as human fossil fuel burning and related greenhouse gas emissions have generated overall ocean surface warming, sea surface temperatures near the Hawaiian Islands are very warm in the range of 2.2 to 1.5 degrees Celsius above normal. These warmer than normal sea surface temperatures are generating quite a bit of atmospheric moisture through evaporation, which is creating a large plume of moisture surrounding the Hawaiian Islands and tending to provide fuel for any rainstorms triggered by tropical systems or instabilities. Plus the prevailing winds on the eastern side of the islands are helping to pile up clouds and storms on the facing mountains. It's worth noting that we are still seeing instances of rainfall on the Big Island of Hawaii with uh, present storm intensity around 11 mil millimeters per three hours in some storms. Uh, let me move Quincy here. Um, so, so what we're seeing is, is generally a, a prevailing tendency for storms to form due to high atmospheric moisture loading. Now, over the next few days, the National Hurricane Center expects what is presently Tropical Depression 16 to turn into a hurricane, potentially a, a major hurricane and approach the Hawaiian Islands by next week. Looking at longer term model runs, the Euro model shows a tropical cyclone approaching and impacting the Hawaiian Islands by Friday of next week, so September 7th. Given the high atmospheric moisture loading and very warm sea surface temperatures, it's possible that such a system could generate strong rainfall following Lane's very severe rainfall, compounding issues for the Hawaiian Islands. It's also worth noting that climatologically, as the Earth warms, storm tracks tend to move closer to Hawaii, with recent climate science showing that during mid-range and, and worst-case fossil fuel emission scenarios for this century, the tropical systems track either 8% or 15% more near Hawaii. So, so you have a, a, an 8% to 15% 15 greater prevalence of tropical cyclone tracks moving toward Hawaii on an RCP 4.5 versus or RCP 8.5 emission scenarios. So tamping down and eventually reducing fossil fuel based carbon emissions to zero reduces potential future impacts for Hawaii as a result of, of tropical cyclones. But as the earth warms, there, there's more of a tendency for tropical cyclones to move closer to Hawaii. So unfortunately, you could tend to see greater impacts just from a change in tropical cyclone track. But in addition, you have a number of compounding impacts, for example, increased atmospheric water vapor due to rising sea surface temperatures and increasing evaporation in the region. 
Thank you for joining me, and I'll be chatting with you soon.